Before we start this video, a large thank you to John Doe, Abitur, James, Kazmorav, D, Lalu, Hey, David, John, Chance, Gaston, Yer DK, and Brandon for their support on Patreon. I hope you guys enjoy the video. And a special thank you to this gentleman right here for their massive support of the channel this month on Patreon. Unfortunately, I do not know how to pronounce your name, so if one of you in the comments can enlighten me, it will be greatly appreciated. Once again, thank you, my friend. Hello, everybody, and now if we go over and attack this dummy with a light attack, uh, you're going to see, I think it's going to do about 27 damage. And if I were to do the same with a heavy attack, I'm just going to reset it, um, I think it's going to do also 27 damage. So my, my point is, both the heavy and the light attack, there we go, as you can see, they do the same amount of damage. Now, we want to change it so that depending on what kind of attack we are using, we're throwing a damage modifier that will basically uh, modify our base weapons damage. So let's open up our enums script first. And uh, right over here under weapon type, I'm just going to, or under ammo type rather, I'm just going to make another public enum called attack type, okay? So think of this like a light attack, heavy attack, running attack, jumping attack. Now I'm only gonna do two just to show you because you can set it up the rest if you want to. So I'm gonna do a light and heavy. And you can add as many as you want. Um, so again, once you wanna do two, you can do, you can do however many you want. So I won't, repeat myself multiple times in the video. I'll leave the rest to you if you want to add them. But let's do light and heavy first. So after we've made these enums, let's go over now to the weapon item script and we're gonna add modifiers for the light and heavy attacks, okay? So I'm just going to create a header right here over the um, critical damage modifier. I'm gonna call it modifiers. And then I'm going to make these have to be floats or at least will be better if they're floats because you can make it like 1.5 or 1.3, you know, or 0.8. So I'm going to call this light attack modifier and then I make another float called heavy attack modifier. Okay. Now, I'm also going to put a comment here. You can have one for running attack. You can have one for jumping attack. Hell, you can even have a light attack one and two because in Dark Souls uh, 3, at least, I know the second attack uh, combo often does more damage than the first. So I'm just going to call this damage modifiers and uh, I'm actually just going to rename this to light attack damage modifier and heavy attack damage modifier. The reason why I'm doing this is because in a video very soon we're going to have stamina modifiers that will drain a stamina based on an attack type but I'll do that in probably the next video when I do guard breaks and stuff. All right so now let's minimize this and go over to our uh, player and specifically we want to go to the player combat manager scripts. Now I don't think we have a driving class for the script. I'm just going to search just to make sure. If I search character combat manager, okay, we don't. So let's make a variable under the player combat manager um, of type attack type, which is the new enum we just created. So I'm going to make a header and I'm just going to call this attack type. So it sticks out in the inspector. And this is just for debugging purposes also, but we're going to access it for another script. So uh, public attack type, current attack type. So every time we attack, we're going to change this. And depending on what kind of attack we're using, we're going to change it. So now that that is done, let's go over into our uh, scripts again. And this time we want to grab our light attack action and our heavy attack action, okay? Now, I'm going to use light attack for um, all forms of running and light attacks and heavy attack for all forms of jumping attacks and stuff like that. But you, you can add your own here if you want to. So for me, I'm going to come right to the very bottom. And just to really sell this too, you could come back here and you could do, um, you could say light attack two and light attack one. And you could say heavy attack one and heavy attack two. So that way you can modify the specific damage type in the chain. So you can make it so the second combo does more than the first, uh, et cetera, et cetera. I'm not going to do that. I have that done on Nephilim uh, in a very similar way. But this is what Souls does with a lot of weapons because in a lot of weapons, the actual second strike in the combo chain is oftentimes more deadly than the first. But for now, I'm just going to keep it the same for the sake of the video to keep it simple. You can add, add those in if you want to. Um, it is all the exact same logic. So nothing that you would want to do for that is different. Uh, I'm just going to do just these two so the video isn't an hour long of me doing the same thing over and over again. So anyway, I'm going to go to handle light attack action and right at the very bottom... I'm going to declare that we are using a light attack. So after we process any of the code, if you if you want to separate this in the running attack, light attack, or jumping attack, you would put those in those specific little functions where it says handle running attack, handle light weapon combo, etc. But since I'm only using light attack, I'm going to say right at the very, very bottom, player dot player combat manager dot current attack type equals attack type dot light, and then under perform action here under heavy attack, I'm going to do the same thing right at the very bottom. Unless you're going to separate this into jumping attack, I'm going to say right at the very bottom, uh, attack type equals heavy. 
and I'm gonna save it. So basically stick this wherever uh, the action is that you want to change the attack type. Uh, and that's that's it. It's it's very very straightforward. Now it's done. Now we have to actually go and make the modifier values on the weapon ourselves. So I'm gonna go to the sword here. I'm gonna make the light damage modifier one and the heavy damage modifier two. Excuse me. And uh, then we need to go to the damage clutter and find where we actually trade or transfer the damage to our character. So uh, we're doing a bunch of stuff here. An on trigger enter though is where we're actually deciding um, what damage is happening. So. Uh, let's create a new protected virtual void. I'm just going to call this uh, check for attack type. You know what? Actually, I'm going to keep it even more simple. I'm just going to call this deal damage because that's what's happening here. We're checking the attack type, and based on that, we're going to uh, modify our damage values. So there is some code in here. Let's make some pseudo code first. We need to get the attack type from the attacking character, and then we need to modify the damage values or apply the damage modifiers to the, dam uh, the damage that we have from the damage glider. And we have to pass the damage to the character that was dealt the damage. So we're going to need to put this on the character combat manager. So let's create a base class. And the reason why we're doing that is because in the future, if we want to do this for um, AI, it's the same process. So we're going to say character combat manager and then we are going to um, delete the start and update whenever this pops up. There we go. And uh, I'm going to put in my namespace minus SG as is per tradition. And then I'm going to simply copy and paste in the variable we made um, of type attack type. And this was not this is this is not going to break the code because first we're going to make this derive from character combat manager. And that way this code is still accessible through the player combat manager as well. All right, so I'm just going to put this right here, and we're good to go. Save that. Now, um, I'm also going to do one more thing. I'm going to go to the character manager, and I'm going to make it so that we call upon the character combat manager when the uh, game starts. So public character combat manager script. I'm going to call it character combat manager. And then on awake, we're going to say character combat manager is equal to get component character combat manager. And again, this will work if it is a player combat manager. We're also just doing this so we can reference it from the script if we ever reference the character manager. So now if I go back to the damage clutter here, you can see we actually have a character manager script up here. Okay, And this character manager variable is the attacking character or the character wielding the weapon. It's going to search this to make sure. Yes, it is. So with that, we can now access our damage type, which is what we want. Now, there are multiple ways to do what I'm going to do next. I'm going to give you two, but I'm going to do one specifically. So uh, you can see here we check for parry, you check for block, and we go down and right down here, uh, this is where we actually apply the damage. And right now, there's nothing fancy. It's just physical damage. That's it. That's on the damage clutter. Uh, so what we want to do is we're actually going to copy all this and delete it from here. And this will still come into play. But this will come to play last. I'm just going to say deal damage. I'm going to put that right here. That's this function we just made. Uh, so with that code copied and not deleted, now we can get so we can paste that in here. So you can see right away we need an enemy stats. So let's make it so we have to pass a character stats manager variable, and we'll call that enemy stats because we already uh, we already get that when we do the on trigger enter. And then we can just put enemy stats here under deal damage, and this still works. Okay, so we're still passing damage as we did before, but right now it's just the raw damage from the damage clutter. We need to modify that damage based on which attack type we are um, attacking. So I'm just gonna, actually, I don't like that right there. I, I'm just gonna put that back in the bottom because this right here is just the code for instantiating the uh, effects. So I'm just gonna put deal damage right there. All right, so now multiple ways. Remember before we had a variable uh, um, that stored our current item being used? You can use that. And then you can check for the current item being used and then apply the damage modifier from that weapon, which is probably the simpler way looking back on it. Um, but either way, we need to first say if character manager dot character common manager dot current attack type equals light or if it equals heavy. Now, we need to know which weapon that's coming from too. So we can grab the appropriate modifiers. And there's two ways to get that. You can check current item being used or if you want to, you can check left or right hand. And left to right hand is going to give you a little bit more code, but I'm just going to use that for the sake of the video. Um, I might change this later, but you can say if character manager dot is using left hand or is using right hand, I'm going to start with. 
else if his character manager is using left hand. Um, so like I said, it's probably simpler to use current item being used. I believe we store the item every time we attack and that's only one statement as opposed to two, but I'm going to use this just for the sake of the video. I will probably change it in the future. Uh, there we go. So now within this, if we're using our right hand, I'm just going to separate this so we can see if we are using our, the right weapon, we want to take the right weapons modifiers or we compare the right weapons modifiers. And if we use the left hand, then we use the left weapons modifiers. And in our project right now, most of you probably don't have it so you can even attack with the left hand. Uh, I do a Nephilim, but I just wanted to make this so in case any of you do, you know how to do it. And now this still stays at the bottom. What we need to do is create a variable now for uh, final physical damage, which will take a base physical damage and modify it based on these modifiers. So everything at the bottom still stays exactly the same. And what we want to do first is come right up to the top here now and create a float variable called, uh, you can call it physical damage, but I think we've already got that on the damage collider. So I am just going to call it, uh, actually, let me see. Yes, physical, no. Yeah, like I said before, we'll call it final physical damage. That's the best name for it because this is the final damage after the modification has been applied. Um, okay, so what we want to do first is we can initialize that at our regular physical damage under damage collider. So that's the raw damage that the weapon gets right away. And then under here, all we simply say is physical damage is equal to, um, we're going to say character manager dot character inventory manager. And since this is the right hand, it will be the right weapon. And since it's the light attack, it will be the light attack modifier. Um, and I just realized I have made a mistake. This is supposed to be final physical damage uh, equals final physical damage times this right here because the physical damage trait is only an int and this is what we need to use. So we're going to say final physical damage equals final physical damage times the left attack damage modifier or the right weapons light attack damage modifier. And then paste this down here and uh, change light attack with heavy attack and then paste both down below and replace the right hand with the left. So again, uh, this is very straightforward. And after we take the, this final physical damage, we're going to simply pass that, um, still checking for the poise, and see if we break the poise. And you can do the same thing with poise and change the poise based on heavier light attacks if you want with a poise modifier. Uh, and then we are going to simply um, round it because we need to pass an integer value, not a, a float. So what we're going to do is say final physical damage in here. And then you're going to see that's going to give you an error because it's going to complain that it's not an integer. But what we can do is simply say math f dot round to int. And that will take it and change the final physical damage to an integer for the sake of passing it. And then we copy it and paste it up here. And there you go, guys. That is, uh, that's it for weapons. So I'm going to say deal final amount of damage. That, that will just give you a damage modification. We're not done with this. We're going to drain stamina based on modifications and we're going to we're going to affect poise based on modifications but in this video right now this is all we're going to do so now if i were to so now if i were to go over to this gentleman right here and click on his name you would see that he has 100 health so if i do the light attack it should deal 27 yes it does and the heavy attack should deal twice as much as that which should be um 54 i believe so he should be left with 46 health so if i do a heavy attack here now let's see and yes, it does. He has 46 health, so the modifiers are working as intended. If you guys like this video, please don't forget to drop a like. It really helps out the series a whole, whole lot and only takes a second. Uh, leave a comment to appease the YouTube algorithm gods. A special thank you to my patrons, as usual. It's because of you guys I get to keep doing this. And in the next video, we're going to explore uh, guard breaking as well as stamina draining when you're blocking an attack and some stamina damage modifiers. So when you swing a weapon, obviously a heavy attack is going to cost more than a light attack. We're going to make a smart function to just do that all in one go. So we won't need uh, animation events for every different animation. Uh, we'll just use one that will decide based on the attack type. So I will see you guys in the next one.